Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a nice problem with conjugates. Z bar is the complex conjugate of Z which is defined as if Z is equal to A plus BI which is by the way name of this channel and then Z bar is just going to be A minus BI. So it's the unique complex number which gives us a real answer when multiplied by or added to z. Make sense? That's how it's defined, but you can also use this simple definition. And this is kind of nice because this is something we can kind of plug in, right? So I can replace z with a plus bi, raise it to the fifth power, and then on the right hand side, I can take a minus bi and not raise it to any power because it's not raised to any powers, right? Great. Now, this turns into something not so great because on the left hand side you're going to have six terms and something like a to the fifth power plus five choose one a to the fourth multiply by bi and then you're going to have five choose two which is the combinatorial coefficients a cubed times bi quantity squared so on and so forth so you're going to have a lot of terms and then you need to set it equal to this and guess what from here you should be able to find a and b right well <laughs> Good luck with that. You can definitely go ahead and give it a try and let us know what you find, right? But I'm going to take a different route. Actually, I'm going to take two different routes. Let's see. First method. This was just a quick intro to give you an idea what on what probably what you would not be doing. But we have now z to the fifth equals negative 16 z bar. Now, by the way, this problem, we've done similar problems before, but we did not have a number in front of the z bar. So we had something like z to the fifth equals z bar, where you could easily solve by pretty much different methods. But this time we have a negative number. Not only a number, but it's a negative number, which is nice, right? So here's what we're going to do. Since we have z bar on the right hand side, it only makes sense if we go ahead and multiply both sides by something, okay? And that something is going to be something that should give us a good answer, like a real answer. So in this case, z bar should be multiplied by z because their product is real. But of course, you have to do the same thing on both sides, unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know. But this is an equation. So now the left-hand side is z to the 6, and this gives us what? The absolute value of z squared. Nice. Don't forget to square it because a plus bi and a minus bi multiplied together gives us a squared plus b squared. But the absolute value of z or z bar is just square root of a squared plus b squared. So it needs to be squared to get that. But one thing that's really interesting about this problem is that, hey, absolute value of z is a real number. It's non-negative. And, of course, its square is going to be real. Negative 16 multiplied by that is also going to be real. So, we have a real number on the right-hand side and a complex number z on the left-hand side. But it's raised to the sixth power. So, what is going on here? Maybe I just need to take the sixth roots of both sides, but what is the absolute value of z? That's going to be the million-dollar question for this question. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and set absolute value of z equal to r, which kind of simplifies things a little bit. And then I'm going to go ahead and start with the original equation, which was z to the fifth equals negative 16 z bar, and then absolute value both sides. Why? Because we can. If z is equal to w, then their absolute values are also equal. This directly um, implies from the well-definedness of absolute value, right? Whatever, you hopefully get the idea. Now, how do you take the absolute value of z to the fifth? Easy. You just take the absolute value of z and then raise it to the fifth power. This number can go out. And then here we have a product. So the absolute value of negative 16, which is a real number, is going to be 16. And then we're going to have the absolute value of z bar. But that's the same thing as the absolute value of z. Because z and z bar are kind of conjugates, their absolute values are equal. Because... They are equal. I don't know. Now, we got an interesting equation because we call this r. So it becomes r to the fifth equals 16r. And guess what? I can solve this problem. Don't cancel out anything. You're going to lose solutions. Instead, take it out. Factor it. Now, from here, we get two things. Actually, three things, but one of them is not valid. First thing, r equals 0. If r is 0, then z is 0 because there's only one number 
whose absolute value is zero and that is just zero plus zero i get it and obviously if you plug it into the original equation z to the fifth equals negative 16 z bar it satisfies because um, the conjugate of zero is zero and zero equals zero a lot of zeros right now let's take a look at the other cases the other cases i say because r could be two or r could be negative two wait a minute r is the absolute value or the modulus it cannot be negative it's always non-non-negative not not non-non like in the sense of double negative but it can't be negative okay that's what i'm trying to say so we're going to go with n equals i mean r equals two and finding r equals two is actually a good thing you know why because we can just plug it in how remember when we multiply both sides by z we got z to the six equals negative 16 times absolute value of z squared and we do know absolute value of z, which is 2. So plug it in, you're going to get a 4. Negative 16 times 4 is going to be negative 64. Awesome. Now we got a really nice equation. Look at that. We are going to take the 6 root of both sides, but we now know what the right-hand side is numerically. So we're going to be looking at 6 roots of negative 64, which should not be too hard to do, right? I mean, think about it. Negative 64 can be written as 64 times e to the power i times pi. But of course, I'm allowed to add multiples of 2 pi, especially if you are finding roots, you definitely should add them. Because when you find the 6 root, so this is kind of like the 6 root. Uh, we're going to be taking the 6 root of this. And it's going to be 2 because this is real. Multiply by e to the power i times that, which I can write as 2n plus 1 pi divided by 6. I should probably put the i at the end, which looks a little better. And here we go. So that's my z, which are the sixth roots of negative 64. There's six of them. And you're going to replace n with certain values, right? For example, what happens if n is equal to 0? Then we get something like z equals 2 times e to the power 0 plus 1 i pi i over 6. Pi over 6 is 30 degrees. So we're going to turn this into 2 times cosine pi over 6 plus i times sine pi over 6. And we know these values. This is root 3 over 2 and this is 1 over 2. So from here, z becomes what? Root 3 plus i. That's just one of the solutions. Of course, there should be more. There should actually be six solutions. But before we get into those details, or without getting into those details, let's go ahead and take a look at an alternative method, okay? You can also use the polar form, which is very helpful. So suppose z is equal to that, and z bar is also very easy to find. You just have to negate the angle, because cosine is even, it'll absorb, and sine will spit, so we'll get that. Make sense? Okay, now we're going to take this, and we know that r is equal to 2, so I just plugged it in without telling you and now we're going to raise this to the fifth power and that'll be negative 16 times 2 e to the negative i theta right that was the original problem remember well i just replaced z with that z with 2 r to the i theta maybe i should just plug it in because you know what i'm already using it so why bother right let's just get rid of the r and replace it with 2 here we go because we know that r is equal to 2 now what do you get out of this I mean, just raise it to the fifth power, you'll see. 32 e to the power 5i theta equals negative 32 e to the negative i theta, which is nice because 32 cancels out. They're real numbers, come on. And now we have the following, the interesting equation. What can you do with something like this? Well, you can kind of absorb, make the e absorb the negative by using an angle such as theta or alpha plus pi. Put everything in the third quadrant and you'll be good but you can also do the following which i realized is a really good idea i think and if you have any other ideas let me know so i kind of put those two together and wrote it as a sum now i'm going to take out something which is going to be very helpful i'll factor out e to the negative i theta why because i want to get one a number so i can kind of factor it like this and notice that this can't be zero right it's never going to be zero so this needs to be zero which means this is negative one and then looking at the six roots of negative one you're going to get the idea but the problem is uh you have to include the r because r is equal to two and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it. please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you next time with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye